I feel like a rock star. I'm rocking Rick Owens. Yeah, strikers and my granny. Okay, all right, we're back here with another reaction video, and as you can see by the title, it we will be doing Steph Curry versus Magic Johnson, who is the GOAT point guard, okay? Mm, I might, I go, I have to go Stephen Curry. I'll go Stephen Curry, just he changed the game to a new level, and like, We've never seen anything like, but just the same with Magic Johnson, though. But I, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm 21. I haven't seen Magic play. I've only seen games and comp and uh, highlights on YouTube. So I mean, I mean, my opinion probably could be swayed a little bit to be a little biased. And um, he beat my Cavs too about like three times for a championship. So and I'm still saying Steph Curry, even though I have every reason to go against it. <laughs> But yeah, all right, let's get in. Let's, let's definitely get into this, man. Let's get into this. ...to NBA Finals. Andre Iguodala called Curry the greatest point guard of all time. Did Steph really bump Magic Johnson from the throne of the number one point guard ever? Here's a detailed comparison between Steph and Magic to discover the true point guard goat. You can't win NBA championships without great teammates. Magic had Kareem and James Worthy. Jordan never won without Pippen. Kobe played with Prime Shaq, and Steph won his titles with Clay, Draymond, and KD. Indeed. But what differentiates Magic from all the guys we just mentioned was his ability to impact winning from the start. Kareem had been with the Lakers for four seasons before true. Magic arrived, and he won only two playoff series in those four years. That is true, bro. Magic did come into the league like fire. I don't know, bro. This is this a this is a hard thing to argue because Magic came in rookie year. I believe it was his rookie year. Played every position in the finals, but Kareem went down and went stupid. I don't know. It's difficult. It's Despite difficult. winning it's multiple difficult. MVP titles, as soon as Magic was drafted in 1970, years, despite seasons before Magic arrived, and he won only two playoff series in those four years. Despite winning multiple MVP titles, as soon as Magic was drafted in 1979, the Lakers won 60 games in a season and made it to the NBA Finals. Magic immediately proved that his leadership and winning mentality were at a GOAT level. Without Kareem, Magic started at center in Game 6 of the 1980 Finals, finishing with 42 points and 15 rebounds. Yeah, that's the game I'm talking about. That's crazy. The championship, winning the Finals MVP trophy yeah, as a that's rookie. that's crazy. Johnson won another Finals MVP in his third year and was an all-star in every season except in 1981 when he was injured. If we account for his NCAA title in... I'm going to have to go Magic Johnson. I'm gonna go magic. I'm gonna go magic. I'm, I'm changing. I'm changing. Hey, 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 hey. All right. I'm still going. I'm still going magic, bro. I don't know, bro. Nice. <laughs> Every season except in 1981 when he was injured. If we account for his NCAA title in 1979, he had the best career start in NBA history. For Curry, it took him a while to transform from a skinny tweener to a superstar. He started his career as a second fiddle to Monte Ellis and nearly got traded in his third season because of bad ankles. Curry made the playoffs for the first time in year four and became an all-star in his fifth NBA season, which is a slower pace than any other player on the top 75 NBA players mm. list. Steph has been a great shooter from the get-go, mm. but overall, he wasn't as good of a player as other NBA greats in his first three or four years, and that's where Magic has a clear advantage. Yeah. Magic is often considered the greatest passer in NBA history while Curry is without any doubt the greatest shooter of all time. It's kind of like comparing apples and oranges in terms of offensive output, because both players are two of the best and most efficient players at their position, together with John Stockton and Steve Nash. Despite not being a great outside shooter, especially early on in his career, Magic has an excellent career true shooting percentage of 61%, Ooh. just like Nash and Stockton, who were some of the greatest shooters ever. Johnson thrived thanks to his great transition offense, excellent post-up game, and efficient drives to the basket. Curry's true shooting is near 63%, Ooh. and he's averaging 24.3 points per game in his career, which is nearly five points more than Magic's 19 and a half. However, Johnson averaged nearly five more assists yeah. than Curry, which would mean that he generated more points per game than Steph while being only slightly less efficient. But Dude, here this is such a good, like, this is such an outstanding, first off, the background music here is beautiful, I like it, but this is such a great, like, 
debate to have because they're literally two different like point guards like they're completely different so it's very difficult bro like they're very different steph curry is six three magic is six nine uh magic is past first point guard curry is a score first point guard like it's it this is a, this is really good something to really think about bro like seriously it mean that he generated more points per game than steph while being only slightly less efficient but here, we have to take into account the difference in eras and the style of basketball that was played. In the early 80s, Magic's Lakers averaged only 20 made threes in a season, while the modern-day Warriors often make 20 threes in one game. So, nice. Steph generates more points off assists because he assisted on more three-pointers. Also, just the threat of Curry's deep bombs spaces the floor and opens up driving lanes, especially because you have to pick him up as soon as he steps into half court. Half court, court. Curry which is crazy. Open. His gravitational pull draws the defense, and it's the driving force behind the Warriors' motion offense. So, just looking at stats doesn't account for Steph's hockey assists. You know what? Hang on. I'm sorry, I keep pausing because this is just such a good video. Listen, I'm in the middle. All right, I, I actually, I'm going to give my answer when when Curry's done and, and not playing. He's still playing. He, he's still playing. He's still playing at high level. Right. I think another problem, too, and I fall into this a little bit, too, is that we be comparing players to old players when when their career's not even done. And that'd be unfair. I ain't going to lie. That, that, that do be unfair. Warriors motion off to both sides. So just looking at stats doesn't account for Steph's hockey assists or all the baskets he sets up by demanding defensive attention everywhere he goes. Curry's off ball movement is one of the best in NBA history, and he became proficient in creating screen assists, especially since he bulked up in the last few seasons. Another good argument for Steph is that Magic played nearly three more minutes per game than him, which inflates his numbers. Also in the playoffs, Johnson's scoring average remained at 19 and a half in 39 minutes per game, while Steph's increased from 24.3 to 26.6 in the playoffs nice. in 37 minutes per game. Nice. Steph also averages 27 and a half points in his six trips to the NBA Finals, which mm. ranks in the top 10 of all time, ahead mm. of guys like Kobe, Kareem, and Larry Bird. Mm. If we compare their numbers per 100 possessions, it's clear that Steph generates more points than Magic. So, because he's extremely efficient with or without the ball, and because he creates so much space just by being Steph Curry, the greatest shooter ever, we have to give Curry the slight advantage in offensive output. And on the defensive end, Magic Johnson was never a great defensive player. He didn't make a single all-defensive team in his career, unlike the other mm. top 10 all-time players. Even though he was fast running in a straight line, Johnson was extremely slow laterally because he was six foot nine and had a high center of gravity. In the 80s, his lack of athleticism and lateral quickness was somewhat masked because the game was played inside the three-point line and it was easier to get steals in tighter spaces. Due to his length and basketball IQ that helped him predict what the offense was going to do, Magic even led the league in steals. But don't let the numbers fool you. Allen Iverson also led the NBA in steals because he gambled and jumped into passing lanes, but he was by all accounts a terrible defensive player. If Magic played in today's pace and space era, he'd probably get exploited and targeted on every possession, and it wouldn't be pretty. I don't know. I think, I think, I think leading the league and steals and not making all, all like at least all defensive third team is kind of crazy. What do y'all think? I think that's kind of crazy, um. But uh, in today's league, I would say though, like, I mean, if he were the guard or opposing to his point guard, but he probably wouldn't. They probably would switch him and have him guard on the small forward or have him guard a taller shooting guard. And then, yeah, I don't know, you know. That, that, I mean, but that's the what if about it. We we, we will never know. Hey, the same could be probably get exploited and targeted on every possession, and it wouldn't be pretty. The same could be said for Steph Curry, whose small frame always made him a mark for opposing offenses. Curry was never a great defensive player in the past, but that has now changed. Steph has been bulking up, adding 15 pounds of muscle from his first championship year until now. He's no longer getting killed on screens and does not get bullied on switches by bigger guards and wings. In the 2022 NBA Finals, 
Boston tried to wear down Curry by yeah. constantly attacking him. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown targeted him in isolation, while Hooper work. and Smart tried to beat him up in the post. Bulked up Curry just shrugged it off, and the Celtics scored a measly yeah. 0.79 points per chance on possessions when they attacked Curry in isolation. Yeah. Steph's improved strength, mobility, lateral quickness, and willingness to hustle made him into a plus defender, which is exceptional for a player past the age of 30. While he certainly isn't going to get selected for the NBA All-Defensive team, Steph has become one of the better defensive guards in the NBA, and he now has a clear advantage over Magic in this department. However, it's always difficult making player comparisons from different eras. Contrasting yes. rules, non-identical competition, and technology gaps are all factors that are nearly impossible to compare. But athletes from the modern era are generally faster, stronger, and more athletic than the athletes from the 70s or 80s. Bill Russell might be the winningest player of all time, but his 210-pound Chuck Taylor wearing skinny body would be barbecue <laughs> chicken if he played against Prime Shaq. Yeah. If the 2013 LeBron got into a DeLorean and traveled back in time to play basketball in 1963 hey. he'd probably average 75 points per game and we're back in third quarter planning adams is quarterbacking this project and she is looking pretty tight aside from physical dominance and modern technology players today are just much more skilled they handle and shoot the ball better and are tactically more advanced hey. Most players spend their summers in the gyms with shooting coaches, nutritionists, and personal trainers. So if you want to know who would be a better player, Cash. prime Steph Curry from 2022 or prime Magic from the late 80s, the answer is pretty straightforward. Steph is a far hey. superior shooter Cash. who doesn't even need to have the ball to be effective, and he became a much better defender. If a 2022 Steph time traveled to 1980, he'd easily average 40 points per game. If you don't believe us, go watch Magic Johnson's Game 6 highlights against the Sixers in the 1980 Finals. The Sixers were so slow in transition, and Magic outran them for nearly half of his 42 points. And they left him open on many jump shots, which were all two-pointers. If Steph Curry played in that game, with his ability to nail threes from 30 feet, it would be like hitting practice shots, because nobody would even guard him that far out. Magic's biggest advantage was his pace, ball handling, basketball IQ, and size in the post against smaller guards. A six foot nine point guard was a phenomenon in the 80s. Yeah. Today's NBA is full of big guards that can hey. handle the ball. If Magic played in today's fast paced hey. NBA, he wouldn't have a physical advantage, and he would always be guarded by tall, athletic demons such as LeBron, Kawhi, or Giannis. And because he didn't have a great jump shot, hey. the defenders would treat him like Ben Simmons or Draymond backing off him and forcing him to take tough and inefficient shots. Defenses in the 80s weren't as good as some old heads like to brag. They were only allowed to foul harder. Even with the hand-checking rules in the 80s and the 90s, Steph Curry would dominate with his shooting and his superior ball handling, hey. especially the 2022 buff version of Steph that couldn't get physically bullied. And because he is extremely well-conditioned, Steph would run circles around everybody, and players in the 80s would get dizzy trying to find him on the floor. So, in a Space Jam scenario, where we'd have to pick one point guard to save the Earth from Monstars in a basketball game, we'd take 2022 Steph over 1987 Magic yeah. any day of the week True. and twice on a Sunday. However, that still doesn't mean Steph is the greatest point guard of all time. In terms of basketball Max. legacy and the greatest point guard of all time debate, it's hard to go against Magic Johnson. Magic instantly transformed the Lakers into a yep. winning team, and they made nine finals in his 12 seasons, winning five championships. Magic won the league MVP three times, most ever for a point guard. And that's and that's another thing too, also is to take into account, listen, to take into account too is, is that we're going off how they dominated their era, right? Who's the better player? I would say Steph Curry's the better player. But who dominated the era more? I would have to say Magic. But that argument could still be kind of made for Steph Curry because Steph Curry was going to back and forth battle with LeBron. You know what I'm saying? Like, feel me? Like, I say, go, go both, you can go both ways. But I, I think accolades and everything probably will go to Magic. Because Magic came in dominating, and he dominated. He was a great player all the way until the end. You know what I'm saying? So it probably would just go to Magic, honestly. He made 10 All-NBA teams and 12 All-Star teams and is generally more successful than Steph despite retiring at the age of 31 due to HIV infection. Johnson won 73% of his games, which is the most in NBA history. And you really can't say anything against winning. 
Magic also had to get a lot of credit for bringing the imagine if Magic played with Kobe the NBA when the league desperately needed it. And it's fair to say that Magic helped save the NBA from bankruptcy. Yeah, he did. Larry Bird. We are not doubting his greatness as a player. And if 1987 Magic could time travel to the future and train like modern athletes, his basketball IQ, leadership, and winning mentality would come yeah. through. Mm -hmm. Due to better competition, more talent, and more teams in the league, Magic would probably not win as many championships, but he'd still be a dominant player, and we bet he'd play a lot like Luka Doncic. Steph still has a lot of basketball left to play, and he might collect more hardware to catch up with Magic and Rings, All-Star, and All-NBA selections. But even if he retired now, his legacy is already set with phenomenal shooting that changed the game forever. Three is more than two, and Steph made the whole basketball world realize it with his golden touch from deep. Steph is also the easiest and most humble superstar to build your team around. And that's why Steve Kerr calls him the short Tim Duncan. Just like Timmy, Steph is one of the best teammates ever who always makes players around him better, leading by example. One could argue that his shooting records, efficiency, and impact on the game make him the GOAT point guard. But Magic has simply won more with less time in the league. So, we believe Magic is still the greatest point guard ever, even though Steph is a better overall player. Yep. Man, that's and that's fair. And that's 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 so fair. That's very fair. That's very fair. Okay, extremely fair to say that because I I agree. You know, if you're going off for of accolades and, and you know all that and greatness, greatness when it comes to accolades and everything. I yeah, I mean you gotta go magic. Um, but Steph isn't. It's his career not over yet. Like he got time to catch up now. He really he he really does. Um, but if we go up with who the, who's the better player, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, we're going Steph. We're going Steph. We're certain he is the better player. What you think? What you think, Mickey? You know, that's fair. That's fair. Y'all heard it first. Mickey doesn't know. So, hey, comment below, like, comment, subscribe, and I'm gone, baby. Yeah, I'm gone. <laughs>